When I started covering the NFL 15 years ago, people told me a woman could never survive. Whatever happened to those people? Yeah, whatever happened to them? <laughs> that was our own Leslie Visser in a promo for the NFL today from 1990. Leslie is a true pioneer and she continues to make history as this month she will receive the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Broadcasters Foundation of America. Congratulations, Leslie, on this well-deserved honor. Speaking of Hall of Famers, when you combine Women's History Month with March Madness, one name comes to mind. Tara Vanderveer. She is in her 36th season coaching at Stanford and won her third national championship last season. As we continue our celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX, fellow Cardinal Summer Sanders sat down with the legendary coach to talk about the impact the law has had on her life. <laughs> Think back to 85, 86, that was, if we're celebrating Title IX, that would be 13 years mm -hmm. after Title IX. When you look at your first season and the impact of Title IX compared to now, how would you describe that difference? Obviously, there's been a lot of improvement with Title IX. It took a while to get going because I was still in college when Title IX was going on and I never was on scholarship. I paid for my shoes, paid for laundering my jerseys. It is night and day compared to how the start of it was and how it is now. But we still have work to do. How important is a back-to-back -back title? You have, it, it's one of the rare things missing mm -hmm. on your long, long list of accolades mm -hmm. and achievements. I don't ever, I don't really think of things that way. I think of just one day, like today, we have a great day of practice. I think being national champions feels great and I loved it. And I hope that our team loves it enough to want to do it again. Last year's team, I told them, your middle name has to be flexible because of all the COVID stuff. You know, this year, I said to our team, you know, we have to make sacrifices. We have 16 players on our team, you know, and with that many players and that many returners, there's just not enough minutes for as many players as we have. Just to be unselfish and to make sacrifices. And our leadership has been phenomenal. And I think that a team that wants to keep playing with each other, that's how you win. You know, I hope that this team just wants to keep playing with each other. I want to go back to you playing in college, because I even, when I ran into Fowdy on the streets, I said, did you know that Coach was a cheerleader? Was it in high school you were a cheerleader? Because you, you didn't have organized sports. Right. So I actually, when in the seventh grade, I tried out for the mascot, and I became the mascot, which was a bear, and I, so I had to wear a bear head. So I was fired after two weeks because I was watching the game instead of leading the cheers, turning the other way. When I changed schools, I actually tried out to be a cheerleader, and I had to borrow a gym suit from a, the only girl I knew in the new school who was two sizes smaller than me. And when I went up for my big cheer, my whole front unbuttoned and, you know, snaps broke. So needless to say, I did not make the cheering squad. But um, high school, you know, early days in college was a very frustrating time for me. There were no organized sports for girls, and, and it was why. You know, it was so frustrating and it was so painful not to be able to play when the boys had a seventh grade team, an eighth grade team, a ninth grade team. And in my ninth grade yearbook, the uh, basketball coach and the gym teacher wrote to the best basketball player in the ninth grade. But what did that do for me? You know, I didn't even get to play on a team. Yeah, you can take it and then it almost fuels the fire mm -hmm. of a little bit of anger, right? You know, I think Title IX has totally defined my life. You know, there's no one that has been more impacted by Title IX than me with my career, with the opportunities that I've had to travel the world to coach. But there's still a side of me that, you know, my timing was great for coaching, but it was just horrible for playing. And when I explain this, even at basketball camp to young girls, you know, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, I'll tell them, you know, I never went to basketball camp. I never played on a varsity team in high school. I never was on scholarship, never played, you know, on television like, you know, now. One little girl raises her hand and says, why not? And I didn't know how to answer it to the eight-year-old, so I said, can anyone else answer? And another little eight-year-old goes, sexism. Which in one part of your brain, you're like, good for you for knowing that word. And mm. then the other part of your brain going, mm. it's a shame that you know that word even still today, right. that's the work that still needs to be done. What kind of work would you like to see? What changes still need to be made? A lot of it is the media, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, when only, you know, one, two, three percent of any coverage of women's sports is 
you know, in the newspaper, on television. You know, it is improving, there's no doubt, but there is an interest in women's sports. And maybe with technology now, you know, there can be more opportunity for uh, our general public to follow these sports and follow these great athletes. Well, and it starts with great leadership. So whether you want to take that or not, I am turning 50 this year. I am 100% a Title IX baby. Mm -hmm. And I have you to thank for so much of what I was afforded, the opportunity that I had. So well, this is my, so my chance to say thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a great conversation uh, between an Olympic champion and an NCAA basketball champion. Uh, love to see also the differences, how Title IX impacted Summer Sanders and Tara Vanderveer. Debbie, you recently spent time with Tara. How incredible is it to see her career arc and how this law impacted her? Well, you know what, Tina, there's so many different ways you can go in listening to Tara. There's Tara, the teacher, whose team continues to get better, and they've won 20 in a row. They're another Final Four caliber team. There's Tara, the advocate, who has fought her entire life to give opportunities to young women. And then there's the leadership component that comes with it. Uh, I know, I've known Tara personally for a long time. What you hear is real, and the subtle humor inside her voice is her basically saying, we need to do more. Mm. I mean, the way that she's been impacted or been impacted by Title IX, we have all been beneficiaries of Title IX and, and understanding the leadership capability that she has and giving back to these young girls and letting them know, you have to take advantage of this opportunity because not everybody had the opportunity. I didn't have the opportunity at your age, but I'm happy to be able to share my wisdom and my knowledge with each of you right now so that you can go forward. You know, it's interesting because young players, sometimes if I ask them, like, you, who's your favorite WNBA player? Sometimes young players don't even watch the WNBA. And I don't understand that because when you hear stories about Atara Vandeveer and what she had to do or what she had to go through to just even play, it's like, that's why you play the game. That's why you have respect. And even for me now, sitting in an ownership box in the WNBA, people always ask me, oh, is it lit? I'm like, I take this serious mm -hmm. because look at the progression and look at what people had to go through to even play. You know, my snook, my mom was the same way. So, you know, I've competed against Tara <laughs> Vandeveer and I have nothing but respect because they trailed the path. They're trailblazers. And becoming a Hall of Famer, of course, as well. And speaking of Hall of Famers, we now officially have one in our midst. <laughs> being named to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame Thank class you. of 2022. Congrats. You guys surprised me with that, but thank you very much. Yes. I'm we honored. Mom all day. Grateful, <laughs> so grateful, uh, so thankful for people like Tara who helped give me an opportunity and us an opportunity. It's our responsibility to move it forward. Oh, it's so great to be in your midst today, HOFer. And for more, of course, on Title IX, CBS Sports Women's Soccer Podcast, Attacking Third. Well, it's doing Title IX Tuesdays all this month, and their latest episode is with new New York Liberty head coach, Sandy Brundello. It's out now. Tune in wherever you get your podcasts.